let's get started. So while demo. Take the main method. So we can create the while programs. Let me take a few of them. Oh, this is the last one, I think. So well done. So we have written so many programs, and uh, let me explain one by one. Okay. See, uh, what is a program? First program is uh, write a program to print one to hundred five digits using while loop. Only five digits you have to print. So I'm making the method uh, non-static method without any parameters. See this private access modifier place. I put a private. So void and print five digits in one to hundred using while loop. Okay. So system dot out dot print and started executing one to hundred five digital soon. In the one to hundred you have so many numbers, right? But we we should you know print only five digital soon. So int i equal to one and this is basically my while loop I'm writing int i equal to one so I uh, no while I less than or equal to hundred, and if I to module right I percentile by five equal to zero, then you print that I value. So then increment the I value by one I plus plus. So sys out, and uh, I'm bringing the cursor. See, I use a print method here. So why not print ln? Print ln if you do, all will print in the vertical. So then uh, your console will fill. It's a difficult to see all the numbers. That's why I'm printing uh, horizontal. How to print horizontally? So every time number will come, print. So the print method, what it will do? So slash t means one tab. One tab will press. After i, after i my uh, appending, slash t. Slash t means one tab it will press. That means one space you will get. So the next iteration, so this uh, I plus plus will increment. It will go here and it will check. And uh, this condition also will check if the condition is true and the second number will print in the same line. In the same line, it will print. It won't go to next line. So why 
print method will print in the same line only. So that's why after all while loop, I'm bringing the cursor to next line with the print error method after all the numbers. So the while loop ends here, while loop ends here. So this is the how, you know, this is the condition is very important. You have to understand this logic. If anything you want to filter in one range, so what is the concept you need to use? If condition. So in the group of elements, you want to filter something. So what is the condition you have to use? The condition statement you have to write. If condition you have to write. That's a concept, basic concept. Anything uh, you want to filter something, loop inside you have to use an if condition for filtering purpose. So that's the first program. Any questions here? No good so far. Okay. So write a program to print even numbers in 1 to 100. See, same logic. The same logic you are going to write here also. Anything difference? What is the difference you can tell? Instead of uh, this place, only a little bit change here. So for the even number means what? Divisible by 2. Divisible by 2. That's it. Instead of 5, you have to put 2. So write that program. So that's exercise for you. Okay. Gotcha. So because there is no change here. So only change is instead of 5, you are going to put 2. That's it. Remaining all code is same. Then write a program to print 50 to 1 odd numbers using while loop. So 50 to 1, that means I have to initialize with my 50. I have to go till 1. So that's why, so public wide print odd numbers 50 to 1 using while loop. So int j equal to 50 while j greater than or equal to 1. See that, what I told you. In descending order, you have to use greater than symbol. And the body, what is the so operator we need to use? Decrement operator. If I decrease one by one, then only I will reach one, right? Otherwise, I cannot mm -hmm. reach. So then I'm checking if it is odd or not, how do you know? So each number is coming here. But 50 to 1, there is even numbers also. How can you filter that? So filtering purpose, if j module 2 not equal to 0, so if the j, so percentile by 2 not equal to 0, then only print that number. Then decrement that uh, j value. So because j is started with 50, bigger number, bigger number to lower number. That's a descending order, right? Mm -hmm. So descending order means you have to use always decrement operator in the while body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next. So are you clear on this? Oh, yes. Okay. So create all these programs. Okay. So next, write a program to print capital A to capital Z alphabets using while loop. So you need to print capital A to capital Z alphabets using while loop. So let's see how to print that. So protected wide print capital A to capital Z using while loop. So system dot out dot print length started executing A to Z alphabets. Care C equal to capital A while C less than or equal to capital Z. So I have to go to capital A to capital Z. Right? This is ascending or descending order? Ascending. So that's why less than or equal to and condition and the body you have to use a increment of C plus plus. So system dot out dot print C each character I'm printing and slash T. So system dot out dot print ln. So this one. Here I used a print only. So understand why I'm using print, why you cannot use print ln. You can use print ln, but the problem is. It will print in the vertically. 
you cannot see how to scroll your console. But if you use print method in the same line here, A, B, C, D, like that, all will print in the same line, horizontal line. After you know, your loop is over, then you call the cursor back to next line. The println, empty println will bring that cursor here. So then println, I'm just using this. See the, the data type here, char, the character you're using. So char c equal to capital U. Are we good? Very good. Okay. So C less than or equal to capital Z. So I'm, I'm just printing all of them. Next. Write a program to print ASCII code from capital A to capital Z using while loop. So here one program. Can you note down that task? Write a program to print small z to small a alphabets using while loop. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the exercise? From small z or small a to small z, you said, right? No, small z to small a. You have to okay, from small z to small a. Okay. Write a program to print small z to small a alphabets using while loop. Okay, got it. Okay. So now, another program. Write a program to print ASCII code from capital A to capital Z using while loop. So ASCII code means integer numbers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm print. I'm creating a, a default access modifier void the print capital A to capital Z ASCII codes using while loop and uh, system dot out dot print and so started executing the a to Z ASCII codes. So int i equal to capital A while see int is I used here we used character right. Mm -hmm. But here I used int i equal to capital A. So I'm assigning the character to integer. So i less than or equal to z. So then system dot out dot print. I'm printing the i value. I'm giving a one space, one tab after each i, one tab I'm pressing. Then i plus plus. So end the loop and bring the cursor to next line. So here what is happening instead of a character, I assigned that character <laughs> a small i. So what will happen? This is capital A is a 65. 65 will come and all the characters 65 onwards till Z 90, it will print all the numbers. So here another example for another program for you. So write a program to print ASCII code from small z to small a using while loop. Okay. Okay. So you have to do these programs and also those programs. Next. So write a program to print multiplication table using while loop. Multiplication table using while loop. You have to create a multiplication table. You know, right? Multiplication tables, how to prepare. Say 2 multiplied by 1 equal to 2, 2 multiplied by 2 equal to 4, 2 multiplied by 3 equal to 6, 2 multiplied by 4 equal to 8. So what are the, this is the table number and this is the 1, 2, 3 and 10 till 10 and the multiplication of 2 and 1. So that is the output here. So here constant is x is a constant and equal to is constant. Remaining all are changing, right? So mm -hmm. that I'm creating a method to build up that. So I need to build this logic. See how we're building public wide print multiplication table in PM. So system dot out dot print and started executing the multiplication table for M. So int i equal to one and while, so i less than or equal to 10. So because my i value 
So you started with one and it should go to till 10. And whatever the table number you give, so it till 10 only one to 10, I need to print. Okay. Mm -hmm. So system.out.println I'm using. See, I'm farming this, this, this format. So here, this is the table number, right? That's why I put mm -hmm. a table number. Plus, I'm joining X. Plus X. X is a doesn't change. That's why I kept in double quotes. And that I am joining with a this. I value is one, right? So this one is belongs to the I. So I, I place it here. Plus, then this double equal to, equal to. So this equal to I kept in double quotes because that doesn't change. Plus M multiply by I. M multiply by I is this one. So that format, this format only I brought it here. Right? Mm -hmm. Then I plus plus. So this is the how you can uh, create a multiplication table for any program. So this is the logic other than that. Now. So next, write a program to find the sum of n natural numbers. N natural numbers, sum you need to find out. So here, n is the natural number you are giving, like a natural number 10 or 100 or 150 or whatever the natural numbers you are giving. Okay? Mm -hmm. It has to calculate. It has to calculate the all the, so till that uh, natural numbers, all it has to sum up and give the output. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's uh, how to get. Let's see what is the logic you need to build. So first you have to declare the sum variable as a zero because you don't have any sum initially. Then declare int i equal to one. So while i less than or equal to n, i less than or equal to n. So curly bracket, okay. Sum equal to sum plus i. Every number I am adding to the previous sum. Then that output I am storing in the sum variable again. Then increment the i value. Then return the sum. So this is the return type method. It's not a void. Because you are getting the output. After summing all the n natural numbers, you will get some output, right? That output I am written. So this is the one of the famous uh, problems. And there is a one more example. Here you will see, uh, for example, you give 100. If you give 100 there. So 1 to 100 numbers, uh, some it will do that. 100 numbers, some it will do. Okay, so understand here, first sum value is 0, i is 1. For example, you take i value 5, okay, 5, just a simple number you take. So while calculating time, take a simple number. So n value, um, you are giving as an input to this method, 5, okay. Later, you can give any number. Once it is logic is correct, everything. So I am assuming that n equal to 5. So then I'm coming one less than or equal to five true comes inside. So what is the sum value currently? Zero. Zero plus I value one. So it's one. So sum is one now. Now where it will go, this, this statement is executed. Now it will go to I plus plus. Currently I value one, no? one plus one, two. It will become two. Now it will go here. 2 less than or equal to 5, true, comes inside. 
So current sum value one, one plus I value two. So one plus two. So it will become sum become three. So now sum is three. Now I value will increment. So I value currently two, two plus one, three. Now it will go up three less than or equal to five, true. See, I'm writing iteration by iteration so that I won't forget. So this is how you need to write until you are perfect, you know, until you are you know, confident on the loop. Then this is true, comes inside. Now currently sum value three plus I value three. So three plus three is six. So now current sum value six. Now I value, it will become three plus one, four. So it will go up four less than or equal to five. Uh, true, comes inside. Sum is uh, currently six, six plus I value four, six plus four, 10. Now sum is 10. Okay, that's why I have written here, sum is 10. Now I plus plus. So I is four plus one, five. Four plus one, five. Uh, five less than or equal to five. It's true. So uh, true comes inside. So some value currently 10, 10 plus five, 15. So it will become 15. So some value is 15. Now here I value will increment. So, so what is I value? Five plus one, six. So six less than or equal to five false. So it doesn't come inside the sum is a 15. It will return to you 15. Okay. Yes. So that's the how you need to execute step by step. If you do manual mental calculation on your mind or through uh, like this, step by step, iteration by iteration, then only you can understand. Otherwise, it's not possible. Okay, so that's the how you know you can understand the coding. So otherwise, it's not possible at all. Okay, so another program for you, another program for you is Write a program to find the difference of even and odd numbers sum for the given number. Okay? So you got my point? You need uh, to find the difference yes. of even numbers and odd numbers sum difference and written that output. Clear? Can you give an example? See, in 1 to 100, you have even numbers and odd numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to calculate the, now this is the sum you calculated for our whole numbers, whatever the number you are getting. If you give 100, 100 numbers sum, you will get it here. Mm. But in this, you have to calculate the even sum or odd sum separately. Here, in the same program, you calculate. Mm -hmm. Same program you have to calculate. You don't need a separate program. Same loop itself, you know how to differentiate. If number is even and what is the logic? If number is odd, what is the logic you need to write? You know that, right? Mm -hmm. So how you can find out the number is even or odd? Just now we have seen already. Yeah, we just did a condition to see if um, I... Um... Modulus 2 is equal to... Mm, exactly, right? Mm -hmm. I module 2. If it is I module 2 equal to 0, that's even number. Then mm -hmm. write even number logic. Even number uh, sum logic. This logic. Even sum logic. You declare it. Two, two variables. One is even sum, odd sum. Two variables you have to declare here. Mm -hmm. Before this loop. So here one, one sum we declared. But you have to declare two sums. You need two sums, right? One mm -hmm. is even sum, odd sum. You need two sums. To get the difference of two numbers, you need two variables, right? One is even sum, odd sum. Mm -hmm. 
So you calculate the even sum in the if condition. In the else condition, you calculate the odd sum. Okay. Now you got the even sum and odd sum. Mm -hmm. Now you do, subtract it. Even sum minus odd sum, you subtract and you get the difference. That difference, you return it. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. You got it or uh, still you have doubts? Uh, I got it. I'll try to run it through tomorrow. If I have any doubts, I'll quickly message you tomorrow. Yeah. So these are the programs. Uh, if you write more programs only, you will get a conference on the coding. So uh, otherwise, it's a difficult, OK? Mm -hmm. OK. So next problem. So these are the very important programs, OK? So please uh, do and you know if you have any doubts, we'll discuss more, OK? I'll help you out. Sure. OK, next. So get the factorial of given number. See the parameters. So these are all programs we are writing so that you can understand the coding. So we started large, slowly coding. One by one. So that's the word. That's what I I didn't you know go to much coding previously because we don't have loops. Now we got the loops now. We got the conditions now. That's why we are adding you know coding more. Okay. So you need to find the factorial value of any given number. What is factorial value? So n factorial, so n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into and so on till 1. That's a factorial value of any number, right? These are all hmm. mathematics. I don't know whether you remember or not. I do. I've just uh, used it in calculations before, but um, yeah. I don't really code it with it. Yeah. That's what, right? Mm -hmm. The simple calculations. A long time back we did. But yeah, we are going to use again in the programming, basically coding, uh, mathematics only use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the formula. So let's use that formula, simple formula I'm going to use. Uh, see this. Uh, uh, see, this is also return type method. See, I am following the return type methods. I am. I'm not writing void here. Void means it doesn't return any value. But now, this method is going to return a value. What type of data? Integer type of data. After calculation, it will return the data. So int i equal to 1, int fact equal to 1, while i less than or equal to n. So i less than or equal to n. Fact equal to fact multiplied by i and I plus plus, return the so factorial value. So this is the how you can calculate a factorial value. So you, you can try, okay, you can try for one simple number you take, uh, two or three or four or five, whatever, okay, simple number, mm -hmm. and try it out. So then you will get a better idea here, uh, how it is executing. And uh, so last program, get factorial by recursive. You need to get the factorial value by recursive. I'm not using any loop here, okay? Mm -hmm. See this. If n equal to zero, then return the one. n factorial, uh, zero factorial, uh, so value is one, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm returning one. Okay, if uh, n is not zero, then it will come here. So n multiply by get factorial by recursive n minus 1. See, this is called calling the method name in the body is called a recursive. Recursion, we call this. So what is a recursion? So calling the method. 
same method itself in the body is called a recursion. Mm -hmm. So that is the so recursive means. So this is the one of the interview question. Get the factor value in the recursive way. So you have to write this program. Mm -hmm. See this this the, I just told program right this uh, formula n multiplied by n minus one. Next uh, next iteration n value will reduce right. So mm -hmm. n into n minus two n minus three and so on till one it will go. That's the how to get. Uh, so factorial value in the recursive way. Next. So this is the all while loop. Okay. Now I'm explaining do while loop. You have to add the numbers. Okay. You have to add the numbers until your choice is no. So whatever the number you added, first time you added n value 2. So you add the number 2. And then you proceed the choice as a yes, one more number you want to add. And you added a six next time. First time five, second time six you entered. Third time you entered four. Fourth time you entered no. You don't want to enter any further. Then you have to add all four, six, five. What is the total? 15. 15. That 15, your method has to return to you. That's a program. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's see how to do that. So that's a, I need a few variables, right? One is a number, which number you are adding, uh, entering, that number will store here. Then the every time this number I need to add to the sum. So that I am adding to the sum. Then my choice is okay, I want to go to next number or no. So that is yes or no, you have to add. So first, these numbers, I will uh, these values, I will enter from the keyboard. If you want to enter the values from the keyboard while running the program, so I need to use a scanner class. Scanner SCOBJ equal to new scanner system.in. So it will take the so data from the keyboard. Do, so system.out.print, enter the number you want to add. So so this is cobj dot next int. So int is a number I'm adding that I'm assigning to number variable. See, here I declared local variable, but I didn't assign a value, right? Now mm -hmm. here I'm assigning. Here I am assigning 150 line. And, and, uh, so see that. So this number, whatever the number you're entering in the console, that will go and store in the here. Then immediately what is the next step? Sum that to previous sum value. So sum plus number. So system dot order print select the choice yes or no to enter the next number. So choice equal to scobj dot next. So I told you already scobj dot next will take the string, right? Mm -hmm. So either you can enter yes or no. In the yes first character, what is the in the yes first character? Why? Why? So why will come? In the no, for example, you entered no. So no is a string, right? No, mm -hmm. two more than two letters, string. From that string, this caret of zero. Caret of zero means what it is? No first character. Zero means first character, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the no first character? N. N. So that's what this caret method is doing. From this string, this caret method will fetch the first character and stores in the choice variable. Then while if choice value equal to capital Y or choice value equal to small y, either you can enter a S lowercase or S capital letter, right? It's up to you. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why I'm, I have written a condition for both. If any one of them, if that is true, then it will go again do block. Again, you will enter one more number and that number will add to the sum. Again, it will ask for what is the, your choice. You want to enter one more number or so you want to end it here. So based on that choice, if choice is no, then it will exit and then sum of all the entered numbers will be written to you. 
Okay, so that's the say do while loop. This is the perfect example. So until your choice is no, you are keep on going again, do block it is going. So that is the add numbers until your choice is no. Next, last program. Guess number. So you have to guess the random number. You have to guess the random number. So you need two two variables. One is random number variable. Another one is a guess number. You have to guess the number, right? That's why two variables have taken. So two local variables have taken. First, generate the random number in 1 to 100. You all know this, how to generate the random number. Random number equal to int. So math dot random multiply by 100. So I assign that to random variable. So I generate the random number. I assign to random number variable. So because I need to guess at a no, run time. So that's why I'm again generating a no, scanner class object. SCOB is equal to new scanner system dot in. So do so system dot out dot print and enter the guess number. Enter the guess number. So guess number equal to SCOBZ dot next int. So I'm entering. So what is the random number I'm entering? Okay. If mm -hmm. this guess number and random number is same, okay, equal, then what I'm printing? You guess at the correct random number. I'm printing the random number. Else if, so in case it is not same, then what is the next step? Guess number is less than random number. Then you print it. What is the statement you need to print? Your guess number is less than random number. Try again. Else, system dot out dot print ln. Your guess number is more than random number. Try again. While so guess number is not equal to random number. And until that, so you have to go back in the do block and keep doing the same thing. You will enter one more time also. So this is all about uh, how to enter so random numbers. Uh, just and a quick question with the previous program here. Mm -hmm. um, so it would store the one random number. So say like between one and 100, it picks um, 25 and you're guessing somewhere in the ballpark of like say 20. Will it still be 25 the entire time while we're running this or will the random yes. number change? Yes, yeah, no, just it will be same, it will be same. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It won't change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we kept it uh, no, in the variable so that mm -hmm. it, uh, it doesn't change. Because the next time cursor will go here only, not here. Mm -hmm. So from top to bottom, right, execution. Mm -hmm. So it will execute here. But next time, the here the condition is true. It will go to the do block only, not again here. It won't start here. It will go to do block only. Mm -hmm. That's the do while loop. Cursor won't go to our top of the method. No. Mm -hmm. Do while means only do block inside code only will execute. Then a random number won't change. Mm -hmm. You have to guess that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all. Uh, so practice this. Okay. And prepare all these methods and come back so tomorrow we'll execute them okay then mm -hmm. we'll start the while loop uh, for loop all right thank you and see you tomorrow thank you